Greetings guys and gals, this is Jabberwock bringing you the best in SC Gaming and today we have Bisu vs. Calm played on the 13th of November on Benzene. Uh, Bisu is going to be at the top right and at the bottom left is going to be Calm as the Red Zerg. Bisu is playing Yellow Protoss today and um, yeah, pretty much. A lot of people wanted me to do more uh, StarCraft videos rather than SC2 videos with the CSL and KSL. So I decided to uh, try to put one up every day. I've been slacking a little bit. Didn't get to put this one up until very late, so sorry about that, guys. Uh, looks like Bisu's Pro Scout is going to be going in the right direction. And uh, Bisu has the um, statistical advantage here. He's won four out of the four to two and two to one on those different categories spawning pool up for uh... calm so it looks like he might have gone for a uh... twelve pool or over pool um... looks more like it looks more like a twelve a twelve pool to me Beast's probe scout is in the base and Beast is probably gonna go for a forge fast expand pretty standard for pvz he does have that pylon at the forward position uh... now that he's in the base he's gonna know whether to put a uh, forge down first or nexus first or what to put down first how many cannons to get such and such and uh, doing a good job of denying that extra base if that's what calm is going for he does put down the uh, nexus first so it does go nexus first kind of risky seeming that um, calm went 12 pool instead of like 12 hatchers anything like that but at the same time you know pretty good uh, build he does have a good idea when those zerglings are going to come out and bisu is bisu bisu plays very very well against zerg players that hatchery finally going down and so bisu should know exactly um, what his build is two zerglings popping out along with a drone finally getting his forge down um, he's gonna have to kind of den deny this for a little bit because he has no units out except probes and uh, finally the the cannon going down gonna be just in time that uh, uh, drone over there looks like he's going for another expansion and that's what a lot of zerg players are doing extractor going down as well but yeah that's a lot what a lot of the zerg players are doing is double expanding right off the bat trying to get that good economic advantage pieces probe scout goes back into the base and uh, before this game gets going too fast I just want to say I've been playing freaking terribly in uh, SC2 I just my ZVZ is terrible I don't know why I just switched over to Zerg and uh, pretty much my ZVZ is bronze league or it's, it's, it's actually not that bad it's probably probably platinum but it's just really really bad I just lost two so I'm kind of in a kind of in a sad mood especially because I have a match coming up in the CSL starting again on Delta Quadrant don't know who I'm playing yet but hopefully it's not a ZVZ because then we're kinda screwed layer morphing in for calm now back to the game he does have three drones at that natural uh, that other hatchery is almost popped didn't see what that building was I'm assuming it's a Stargate I mean a cybernetic Cor Cyber Knight's core unless he's got that in his base and I'm assuming that it's a Stargate Overlord popping out as well that Bisu probe is able to still be alive and that's what Bisu is just known for is keeping his his uh, probes alive forever pylon morphing in the base so that is probably gonna be a, a Cyber Knight's core is what I was thinking and uh, you know just pretty pretty standard for both players here this probe is just being so resilient and not di not dying and Bisu's just doing such a good job of microing this pro able to see the entire uh, landscape of comms base here that hatchery finally popped now he is getting the stargate also building something kind of in the way of his gas not entirely in the way of his uh, probes though so they'll be able to mine just fine kind of in a peculiar position don't know why he did that and uh, laughing a little bit over there and it looks like one of the Korean guys has a fro first Korean guy I've ever seen with a fro and I think that's might might be what the Korean commentators are laughing at maybe his new hairstyle something like that maybe he got a perm anyways this probe might go down um, doing a very good job of dodging here has just about one or two hits left and uh, what is going on here uh, taking the label off the water bottle or something don't know what's going on that zealots hiding for some reason zerglings coming into the base probably just to do a scally they're not gonna go for a big push here another hatchery going down so what I'm assuming is he's gonna go for some type of mass hydra is what I'm su I'm assuming uh, he is getting the spire just to deal with the corsairs but the hydralisks are 
probably imminent. He could either go do that or go Ling Muta with uh, some Lurkers. Don't think he's going to do that, though. I really do think that he's going to go Mass Hydra, that kind of uh, Sauron build there. Ling's coming back to the base. I think I heard uh, Corsair, and yes, I did, that Corsair is going to be able to take out that Overlord. And uh, this one Zealot is really just uh, interrupting this mining here at the top left. He's going to have to place down a creep colony, and all of these drones are going to have to run away. They're running down, and now they're running back up, uh, decreasing the mining time really critically. Uh, Beast is doing a really good job of defending here. Zealot finally does go down. That uh, banner was a little bit in the way, but goes down to Zerglings. Corsair is going to be able to scout out the base pretty much. No spore colonies and no Scourge in the air as of yet. So he's going to have free reign over the air. There's the Scourge. Uh-oh. Able to uh, do pretty much a Gosu dodge there by Bisu. There's the Hydralist in as well. So I'm pretty sure Hydralists are going to be coming out any moment. He did see the Hydralist in, though. He is pushing out with three Zealots, one Dragoon. Scourge probably doing the same uh, as Beast was doing with the Corsair, just trying to scout out the base, see exactly what kind of tech there is. And this Corsair is going to be able to get away fairly easily, going to go back to the cannon. More Corsairs being built. He has a Citadel also, probably going to upgrade some Zealot Speed, might go for some Dark Templar, High Templar play, uh, Storm Drop, stuff like that. It's really on the open at this point. This is really the uh, point where the Protoss can pretty much choose whatever kind of build he wants to go. And it looks like he might be pushing in a little bit here. Really good placement uh, of the buildings by Calm, though. There's no way he's going to be able to push in. And he's going to have to retreat, actually. There's a lot of Zerglings out on the field. Uh, he does have speed upgraded for his Zealots, finally. And attacking on two fronts here. Almost a good surround by Calm. Calm's going to have to back up as well. These Zealots are just too resilient, especially with speed now. Those two Scourge just sitting right outside the base. Now a little bit of engagement. Two Zerglings going down, not getting too many hits on the Zealots, doing a very nice job of keeping his Zealots in front of that Dragoon. If that Dragoon gets surrounded, uh, you know, that's just kind of Miss Micro there. Not going to be too critical, but uh, at the same time, if any Mutalists come out, you know, he's kind of screwed. And there, the Hydralis, he's not producing Mutalists, so he is going to go for that. Uh, and there's another hatchery there, so he's got six Hatch Hydras coming out. Robotics Bay. Um, or box facility rather, out um, being built by Bisu, and we see those Hydralis there morphing into Lurkers. So we are going to see Lurker play. He's also getting a Evo Chamber, probably to get some spore, also for some upgrades as well. And so we're going to see Hydra Lurker, very effective build here. Uh, it's really good at timing attack if you can get enough Hydras out. We saw how uh, Violet and Killer worked out, and I believe it was. Killer, who just moved out, aka Baxter, just moved out, and uh, High Templar are now at the field, and here comes Calm, gonna be able to get right through those bases here, and uh, in between the forge and the gateway, he's gonna be able to burrow, there's no observers out in the field, because there's, um... No robotics facility. Bisu looks like he's in a ton of trouble here. Archon morphing in. This Archon might get picked off. Probes are getting picked off left and right. The Archon gets picked off. Calm's in a very, very good position here. Bisu's going to lose this natural. If that robotics facility goes down, he is screwed because he's not going to have any detection at all in these. High Templar, the robotics facility goes down. This is pretty much GG f from here. Although this is Bisu, he does have a lot of zealots here. Uh, he does have Corsairs in the air as well. He needs to pick off that uh, Lurker, though. That Lurker's going to be able to do a ton of damage. Uh, the good thing he did build K cannons in his base that was very nice and not as much damage as I thought was going to be uh, inflicted by Calm's army there able to do a ton of damage picking off overlords as he goes a lot of hydralis out on the field too but Bisu uh, just barely able to get away with his life there a uh, robotics facility building yet again that lurker is just going to be so so annoying until the observers come out he does have an observatory somehow um, I didn't know you could build... Oh, well, I guess he did have the robotics facility up. Um, but yeah, so he does have an observatory. That robotics facility is going to produce an observer anytime this High Templar might get picked off. He needs to really be careful about the High Templar. Archon morphing in now. And uh, these Corsairs need to be, be uh, careful that they don't get picked off. A lot of Orbal Lords getting caught in the open, but no, not getting a kill there. Good micro by Calm, able to get his Hydralis Force right in the middle of that. Observers probably are coming is what I'm assuming because he's sending a lot of these zealots out and now yes observers out on the field um, and that cannon morphing in as well. Uh, there's a, a lot of zealots out for Bisu so he might be able to come back from this. Uh, he is at an 
economic disadvantage. He is at an army disadvantage as well. He's going to have to engage on this bridge, not what he wants to do. Corsair is doing a very nice job of picking off observers. These Archons doing a ton of damage. Zealous is coming in here, and I think they're going to be able to deter this Hydralis force. Good surround by Bisu, able to take out this whole army. Bisu is doing very good on his micro, and Calm is going to have to back up. Calm now looks like he's in a lot of trouble. Bisu is picking off overlords left and right. He's going to be uh, pursuing Calm's army as well, putting down another cannon at his natural. The Archon gets picked off. Not good for Bisu. Bisu's going to have to back up. That Archon was doing a ton of damage. As you know, Archons do do splash damage uh, or area effect damage. Not not sure which one it is. But anyways, they <laughs> they damage more than one unit at a time, which is very effective against Hydralis, especially the grouped up Hydralis. Also very effective against Zerglings. Not really against Cracklings, though. Cracklings are just able to plow through units so easily. And here comes Bisu with a lot of Zealots again. This Hydralis force is going to have to back up yet again. Again, these Corsairs are just being so, so annoying, picking off Overlords left and right. And Bisu now back in this game, I thought that it was almost going to be over for sure. And just by the sheer look on Bisu's face, Bisu is usually known for not showing any emotion at all. But he looked very, very worried uh, when those Zerglings and Hydralist lurkers came in here. Nice surround on the Hydralist, able to cut uh, Calm's army almost in half. Going to be able to pick off this Overlord as well. A lot of lurkers morphing out in the field, though. So he needs to be very, very careful that he doesn't get caught by these. Doesn't need to lose his Observer. If he loses that Observer, that's going to be really really bad here. Uh, Zealots not doing as much as they could. They probably should spread out just a little bit more. DT now out in the field as well. Lurkers morphing in. Burrowing. He's going to need to fight all these at once. He's going to need to kill these very quickly. Observers on the field. These Zealots are going to be able to pick up this. The SKT1 team is clapping. They know that Calm is on the brink of destruction here. Queen's Nest now out. Might be going for Hive Tech anytime soon. Some Defilers and probably some uh... Storm, not Storm, uh, Defilers, the, whatever that cloud thing, I don't know why I'm having a major brain fart here, but that cloud thing, um, Zealots coming back in the base though, more Zealots streaming in, these Hydralists are going to be just a little bit late, this, the, late, this base is probably going to be taken out, Corsair is in the mix, also picking off Overlords left and right, yet again these Hydralists might be able to take down this force, but Bisu really needs to attack this, and there he goes for a surround, doing a very nice job of attacking, focus firing on these Hydralists, more Hydralists streaming in, this is going to be very close, and these Overlords, what the heck are these Overlords doing, I think they might have been rallied up here, uh, when Calm rallied his Hydralists, when he rallied his Hatcheries, but all these overlords are going to get taken out very bad for Calm. Calm is just going to be so, so supply blocked. And you can just see it on his face. He's in a world of hurt. These two hatcheries might go down as well. More Hydral is popping out. But um, Bisu's got a critical force here. He's backing up for some reason. Um, I really think he could take on this force, to be honest. Maybe he's waiting for reinforcements or something. Um, but yeah, he probably could have taken that force out. Might be switching tech. Don't, don't know why he doesn't have more... Uh, army on the field. He is getting the base at that uh, th 334-ish position there. So he's going to be at three bases uh, really, really soon. No spore colonies in the main. He's going to see that he did go for Hive Tech. Hive Tech is out now for Calm and probably going to go for Defilers. And uh, Zealot's just picking off these Hydralis, doing a very nice job of attacking on multiple fronts. Here comes Bisu's army from the middle, and uh, Bisu looking very, very confident yet again, like his normal Bisu self. And Bisu has just been playing so, so well lately, able to win a lot of his matches, almost every single one that I've watched. I think he's only lost one that I've watched, uh, one that I've, yeah, one that I've watched, and uh, just doing a very nice job. It looks like that probe might have got stuck there. Uh, but anyways. Zealots coming in back to this top left base. They're going to be able to take out these two hatcheries. A lot of eggs morphing, though. He needs to be very careful. Probably going to storm the eggs right when they pop out. Um, but must be very careful. Good storm on a lot of units. I think those were Zerglings that all went down. Another storm on one of the Hydralis. And now I think he's just doing a little bit of BM. GG coming from Calm and Bisu. Just being relentless, being persistent, doing a very nice job. GG. See you guys next game.